Hi, welcome back to Civil Engineering 305, which is our Strength of Materials class. Our next question that we are going to deal with is, what does a structure actually do? What are its critical functions? You can see that's question number two, and we will try and answer this. As usual, I will go back to my uh, written version so that we can see. So, what a typical structure does is the following, and this is important. We talked very briefly about this. It um, constrains and protects other objects from excessive forces by channeling them around the object. That's item number one. We talked about this. Second thing is sometimes it actually does uh, something else. It deliberately induces flexibility so that objects can move a little bit. This seems diametrically opposite to item one, right? Now on the one hand you want it to constrain objects, the other hand you want it to give it some flexibility. The idea is the following, sometimes if you try to constrain an object too rigidly, you will break it. You will have to let it go a little bit so that it can do. In other cases, you deliberately want flexibility and I will show you an example from uh, sports so that you can see how this thing works. And if you do exercise, uh, if you use exercise machines, you can see that some parts are deliberately meant to be rigid, some parts are deliberately meant to be flexible. The third one is even more amazing. It is sometimes useful to break apart in order to protect other parts or objects. Now this is really bizarre, no? Because you are saying you will deliberately break a structure in order to prevent it, but prevent uh, damage to other parts. This is typically called fail safe. This is called fail safe. What it means is that we deliberately want it to fail in a safe manner. That's why it's called fail safe. A classic example is a fuse. A fuse will melt and hence will protect the critical parts. You can replace the fuse easily. Correspondingly, there are force fuses and you will see examples of them. So what it is, is that you want to have three things that you want to control. So the idea is controlled. So what a frame provides, so let me write this down. A frame provides or a structure provides controlled What? Strength. Strength means how strong is it before it breaks. Stiffness. How much, uh, how much it will bend or, or change shape when you apply forces. And control stability. Stability means it should not buckle. For example, here is a bar, here is a, so you can see that if I push on it, it will bend out of shape in some way, right? So if I take this, if I keep pushing, I, I'm pushing, I don't know whether you can see, uh, but suddenly it will just bend, you know, that's called unstable because it will suddenly bend. And for a wire, you need this ability to bend and break and twist and all of that because you should be able to control where it goes. 
okay this is an example of controlled aspect so controlling these three things is critical to making a structure work and a structure provides controlled aspects of this let's look at some examples i'm going to deliberately pick something that's quite different from what you would expect because i want you to understand that structures are not just bridges and things it's everywhere and typically our human body is a amazing structure because sometimes it will be deliberately made stiff sometimes it will be deliberately flexible i will show you both the examples so first one we are going to look at a weightlifter the one who won the gold by lifting 545 pounds i mean that's serious weight right so imagine here's the guy so here's the guy and here is the this is the structure which is controlling and constraining these two objects can you see that and here is the other structure that's going to control this original structure so this is a double combination you see what i mean so what will happen is the weight of this guy the weight of these two of these two will eventually flow into this person and come out through actually through their legs like that you will see what happens so the first stage of this is where he is going to lift it so by the way he lifted 545 pounds which is well within his capability by the way this is a iranian weightlifter who won the who won the olympic gold and 545 pounds apparently is well within his limits he can lift a lot more but you can see now that first thing you notice is that it is now slightly curved it's bent can you see force 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 this is called four point bending and in this case the aim of the structure of this bar is now is to be stiff it should not bend a whole lot if it is made of rubber you can lift the center and nothing happens in fact uh, there are examples like this in cartoons but now you will see what happens so as he lifts you can see now you have to make sure that the weight that that's here kind of flows like this and in this case it has to flow through his hands because that's what is touching can you see there's a gap in his legs so it flows through his hands and flows out like this this one flows through his hands that's the channel right now it's really lifted it and you can see that it has bent a lot more okay compared to how much it has bent here it's bent a lot more this is because moving upward actually i should say accelerating upward causes increased loads now what is happening here is the load here is the load not only that because he's accelerating there is extra and it goes like that through his chest through his legs through his chest through his legs okay now we come to the next stage so now look the load is in really short version it goes like this here's the load here's the load it goes through like that and goes straight uh, like that okay and you can see the bar is pretty much straight here because it's now there are it's a six point bending okay in all of these cases the main aim of the bar is to be as rigid as possible now he has stood up and i want you to realize that now it's a very straight path it goes like that and you can see his knees are locked this is very critical so this is really the main thing his knees are locked then he wants to lift this up and get underneath it so he's going to swing so first step is the swing motion where he's going to lift up his elbows now you can see his entire this portion is under so this is a bar this is a bar this is a bar that's a bar 
that's a bar this one weights so everything starts from the object that you want to constrain the weight of these objects and it has to flow through all these bars down now look he is now going to lock his arms so now bar 1 bar 2 bar 3 that's one bar that's the other that's the that's the frame so at every stage you have a frame that's locked now you come to the last one you can see now he has lifted it up almost straight forces are coming in very easily and goes through one arm is front one arm is back he has moved his arm forward and then he is now fully now you notice how it is bent and then here are the two arms they are completely locked his knees are locked right he is done now he is going to drop it and i want you to notice something interesting about dropping can you see here is the bar here is the mass but i want you to notice the bar is straight what happened to the bending because the whole thing is falling and as far as the bar goes that's the same as being weightless right because if i'm accelerating upwards i will increase the total load on the bar when i am accelerating downwards i will decrease the total load on the bar in fact when it's undergoing free fall there is no load on the bar when there's no load you can see it's absolutely straight and i want to emphasize that so i want can you see how straight it is so remember it's not just the weight it's also whether it's accelerating or not so you have to account for dynamics in this particular case okay so in this particular case this particular example is all about rigidity the frame has to be absolutely rigid right and it has to confine the 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 heavy weights to move in the right way now let us look at another example where actually the it is the exact opposite of this you want something to be flexible so let's see that this is the pole vaulter sure who jumped 15 feet 7 inches that's quite high okay so now you see the opposite of rigidity which is flexibility the same body is now being used in a entirely different way so now here is the frame can you see that that's the frame and what she is going to do is really use the flexibility of the pole vault can you see how flexible it is and and also the flexibility of her body can you see that so what that does is it stores a lot of energy so that the bar can actually fling her over the over the pole okay now look if you look this at this you can see it's almost like a bow and arrow can you see that that's the bow and she's the arrow so in a very interesting way she is actually going to be both the bow string as well as the arrow so she's going to go off all the way up and above so you can see how that works there she's swinging herself up can you see that this was because of the energy that was stored here and then there she goes now here is the bar this is the entire thing that's supporting the weight here are the two bars like that here is her body the actual thing should have been more straight because the straighter you are the closer you are to vertical the more force you can exert so up to now the bar was flexible now you want in principle you want the bar to be rigid because it has done its job now what she is doing can you see how tense her muscles are here that's because she is pushing down on the bar as hard as she can so that she can jump over the uh over the cross bar and you can see she's cleared it up quite a, quite well but she has to push as hard as she can on that bar when that happens i have this bar like this vertically and somebody is pushing on it if the bar buckles you're over that's it okay in this particular case it's absolutely rigid and stiff and off she goes this is an example of a situation in which actually the bar the flexibility of the frame is important 
Okay, so the previous example we saw rigidity. In this example, we saw controlled flexibility. In the previous one, we saw controlled rigidity and strength because it, we have to make sure that at 545 pounds, it does not break. Here it is controlled rigidity and strength. So even if it is bent so much into a basically a C shape, it should, it should still not break. The next example is where you deliberately break. So the first, these are called actually shear pins. I'll show you the next example. So here is a shear bolt. And a shear bolt is something that you could find in a lot of things. For example, you can find that in a, in a, in a snow blower. So what happens is you're trying to blow away snow somewhere and it has to suck air or you're trying to clean it up. So you have to cut the snow and then suck it up and blow it out, right? What happens if you hit a rock? You don't want the blades to break. You don't want the machine to seize. So what will happen is there will be a little shear bolt. Can you see this little groove here? What will happen is it will break right here. It's easy to replace a bolt. You can get thousands of them. That's cheap. But it's much harder to replace everything if the whole thing seizes. So this is a typical kind of overload. This is actually a fuse. This is a mechanical fuse. These are not just in things, small things like snow blowers. If you have to have a building that has to withstand an earthquake, you need to have certain mechanical pins. I will show you two of them. Here is a, this is called a hinge pin. This is there in the new, um, uh, in, the, in the new Bay, Bay Bridge. And in fact, uh, if one of your lesson, one of your requirements is to is to actually go and, and uh, view this multimedia expo, multimedia thing on the Bay Bridge because you will see how this hinge pin acts. What happens is these are two parts of the deck. So here are the cars. Okay, this is the roadway. If the deck sways like this or sideways, this thing will break if it is too much protecting the rest of the bridge. So it is clearly meant to break at a certain point. This one is much more interesting. This is called a shear plate. A shear plate, you can see these are the shear plates here, one, two, three, four, like that. The shear plates, what happens is when the vertical span of the bridge, when it sways back and forth, you can see how my hand is sliding past each other, right? And what will happen is the plates will break, not the, not the vertical pillars. It's easy to replace the plates. And in the process of breaking, they will absorb a lot of energy. Okay, this kind of thing is also found in cars, not necessarily a shear plate, but what it has is what is called a crumple zone in your car. So the front of your car can withstand a large amount of energy, can absorb a large amount of energy, because it will deliberately crumple. The engine will take a lot of the lot of the energy and get destroyed, but the passenger compartment is safe. You remember what I told you about keeping things, not making sure that not much force goes through the passengers? That's a good, that's one of the examples, okay? But I want you to understand that there are three controlled things that a structure does. Controlled strength, when it breaks, you can control that. Controlled stiffness, how much it deflects, and controlled stability, whether or not it will buckle. Figuring out how these three things work is the essence of our class. Thank you.